Hey, everybody. Uh, we're Gone is Gone, and we're doing something that uh, we're definitely not comfortable with, but uh, here we go. I could start, then everyone could kind of go in. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> The original idea of, of like why to start a band and why to start this band in general, uh, Mike and I were uh, at that point we were working on a lot of trailers together, and you know it was one of those things that we had this trailer that kept on getting used and used and used, and we were talking about that stuff and how it'd be really cool to eventually make these songs or you know or like what could we do to like bring in you know people that we want to work with to to you know make them more of a like a band and a and a and a away from a cue type sound um and we were working on this cue um for a movie that we're like it really it'd be really cool if it had guitars and i i, I told mike i was like maybe we should call you know troy van lewin and uh, and he He's like, yeah, I'll come. So he came one late evening. I remember we were in Mike's studio, and he had he had all his gear, and he had a broken collarbone. Oh, and, forgot about that. And and then I was like, I was like, are you sure you want to play tonight? And he's like, yeah, sure. So he came in and he tracked guitar um, for a, the song that became called uh, "Praying from the Danger." Praying from the Praying danger. From the danger. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, that was. For, beginning of that i remember like saying to you sure i can play but you know i have to play in an open tuning and i have to sit in a chair with that has an elbow rest <laughs> so basically i was sitting in a chair all wonky playing in this open tuning and just hitting bar chords literally like one finger bar chords for everything and it hurt. I was that was the first thing I've done since I've broken my collarbone as far as playing music. But I was like, I have to try because I'm gonna go nuts if I don't. Um, so that was that was kind of a nice uh, introduction to like being able to play and going, oh, okay, yeah, I can I can probably do this. And then two weeks later, I went on tour for your in Europe playing festivals. Which was much harder, I was going to say. But <laughs> to have that opportunity to go, well, I'm just going to do this because I, I got to, I got to try, um, was kind of my philosophy at the point, at that point. Um, so that was that was sort of fun. It was kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a good time, except for you writhing in pain. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was fun in hindsight. But but you just said that your first experience with Tony and Mike was painful. Painful, yeah, that's right. Okay. Exactly. It always is. Um, <laughs> this this um, that's project started from pain. Physical yeah. pain. Yeah, you know it's funny. I it's funny. I completely forgot about that that cue of ours, Tony. It's called. If you can Google it. It's on everywhere. It's called Fallen Shadows, and uh, that's like the original "Gone Is Gone" sound, you could say. And that was in so many trailers. I, I that was God. That was so long ago. Oh, that was no, but the, the, funny thing, the funny thing is like a, the song that we're talking about is on the first EP, but I mean, yeah, it was a draft back then for a long time until until uh, you guys were like, let's we should get a vocalist in here. And, and yeah, uh, well, we at that point we had decided to like just get together and uh, as us three and just kind of right as a band and no no production no um you know no you know daw no like typical stuff that we were doing at that point and just kind of jam as a band and uh at that point it was just us three and that's when a lot of those songs started coming together and i remember like i remember jamming through what became violescent musically and um and Starlight and all those songs. And that was a really fun time. And we actually brought in an engineer towards the end of that, our friend Mike Major, and he ended up tracking tracking all that stuff on this amazing 
like, I'll, I'll take the word amazing back, but this board, this Soundcraft board I had that I was like, <laughs> I got to own a board one time in my life. And uh, so I, I bought a board, we put it at Mike's and uh, spent way too much money fixing it. And then, but it, it recorded that EP. And then I got rid of it right after that. We recorded that EP, but it's really cool that it had that, that board at least did that for a little bit. And uh, yeah, and then we kind of, you know, did roughs of all that. Um, and we were bouncing around singers and, you know, nothing came to fruition. And, and I remember Mike and I, uh, we were just going through like different singers and talking about who'd even be want to do it. Um, and we were listening, you know, and Mike pointed out like, let's listen to Mastodon. And we listened to Mastodon and Troy's voice kept on coming up to us as that one, that one, that one. And, um, and it was really crazy because when we told Troy Van Leeuwen about it, he's like, actually, Troy and I have had talks for years and years on the road about, you know, what was it starting a bar originally together? And then- Yeah, it was called Two Troys. But no, it's just called <laughs> Troys, plural. Yeah. Yeah. A bar called Troys. Um, <laughs> But you so know, we did the this is second best thing. This is ne the next, yeah. Far, it's far down the list, but yeah, it's yeah. But so I, I, I was like, you know, I know Troy, and and you know, we we talk on the phone, you know, occasionally. I, I would say we were acquaintances, but you know, when you're when you're on the road, and you meet other guys that are on the road, and you click, and you know, stay in touch, which yeah, which is sort of like how Tony and I met as well. So those are kind of the things that that are beneficial when when you know when when you're out there on the road and you have you know you have this what my friends a friend of mine used to call the rock and roll decks. <laughs> so, like that. All your friends that are in rock bands that you can go, hey I want to open a bar. No, I want to start a band. What you, it's so, like I, a, I, I call it a, a, a Rolodex of uh, my marginally famous friends. <laughs> <laughs> because when and you we, found us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I think, I think that Van Leeuwen and myself started at least two or three bands before I met Tony. Yeah, and there was definitely a bunch of names thrown around for sure. In theory. What were some of the names that you guys had thrown around? I, could I never don't remember. remember. Or tell you. <laughs> Let me ago. guess one. Troy. I mean, <laughs> Troy, Troy Squared. You know, and I mean, two Troys are better than one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, those are those are good. It's a good it's time for us. Yeah. So, it, had we not had that camaraderie, you probably wouldn't have thought of me. You know. So, I hope that that maybe had had some. some well, I mean, when they said we we're thinking of Troy from Macedon, I was like, well, I'll just call him. And then I think I called you, and you were like in the line at the DMV or something. <laughs> and you're I like, was. cool, I'm gonna talk to you for like an hour before I get my license. <laughs> Plus, fine. as you know, the, the line of a DMV is one of the most depressing places on earth. Yeah, so, so you, were, you, were a, uh, you were a wonderful ray of, of bright, optimistic light that day. And I'll never forget that. Rare that I like that, but I'm glad wow. I got that. I've never thought of Troy in that way at all, but here we go. Well, <laughs> go hang out at the DMV and wait for him to call you. It'll just bring you up. From the depths. I got I, when you guys go to the DMV, um, just text me. I'll call you. <laughs> I remember when when Troy Sanders came to um, LA to uh, you know just kind of demo some of the songs. Um, I for some weird reason I was the only one that could be there, and we were at Mike's place, and so. It was just Sanders and I like getting to know each other and working together and bouncing ideas. Just that those two days, I don't know why that happened, but um, yeah, it, it started was, with it the three of us, and then I had to I had to do go somewhere. I don't know what I don't yeah, remember either. Yeah, and I just remember like I didn't know him at all. You know, I had re met the rest of Mastodon at at Reading uh, a few years before, and I for I didn't meet Troy that night. And so we were kind of like, all of a sudden, like literally like shook hands and then we were, you know, pseudo intimate together because we we're like 
trying to work on these songs and it was really funny but we got along immediately which is really fun tony did you feel that uh that that, that it was becoming like a forced friendship oh definitely i still do, <laughs> still do. <laughs> don't take it personally yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure of that that's a good way to, to to realize if we're cut out for it together or not is just being in a studio together like hey we're yeah, in a band jump in the fire, yeah. let's start recording here we go yeah it's a surefire way yeah, to be like fine. this is working or else one of us has to get out of here so exactly it hand out for the better but yeah, thankfully, uh, yeah, you're, you're, thankfully you're a very uh, open-minded collaborator troy man that's the only way to be right to 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 even embrace the idea of at the time it was just a, you know a, a side project or at least it was in my eyes when VL called and, and asked to, to come listen to some of these songs. But in hindsight, it turned out to be one of the, you know, amazing. I don't know if I've ever thanked you guys, but uh, thanks for thinking of me. Six years <laughs> uh, later. Um, yeah, thanks for saying yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the two albums that we've done, plus this new one that we've finished recording. When I listen back, it's it's like, it's the pinnacle of, uh, of the most personal, um, outlet that I've ever been able to do alone as far as vocally or being in a band. Playing bass is one thing, but but being the only vocalist is something I've never done. So uh, to channel all the good and bad over the past six years into just this band alone has been, um, it's, it's, it's insane when I think about it. And it's given, you know, some people say that being in a band is therapeutic and it's positive and it's healthy and it's energetic. Well, I don't think it's that. I think it's, it's all for those combined times a hundred you know, for me personally. What and, bands are those people in? Well, it's, <laughs> you want me to tell you that your bands? <laughs> no, but, saying, um, what bands are those people in? Uh, but uh, <laughs> point being is I'm glad my name came up and I'm glad Troy yeah. brought me out of the depths of the DMV. On your name was the first name that came November up. Day. Yeah. Yeah, That's your, crazy your name was literally name the first one. Literally, I, I called Troy and I said, I want to drop our first name in the hat, Troy Sanders. And he was like, oh, yeah, I know Troy. We've talked about starting a band. I'll call him right now. <laughs> no time like the present. Love yeah, I was, I was just reminded that we played our first show uh, at the Dragonfly right before the EP came out. Yep. Which is crazy. And I don't know if you guys remember, I had just come back from Europe. Um, for, um, and... I, I, a few days after that, I literally passed out in my house yep. and had to go to the hospital and like I suffered from dehydration and our, 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 our practice right before that show, the show, like I almost, I had to almost, I've never done this in my life. Like I almost had to cancel the show. I, I remember being in those couches at whatever that rehearsal space was called. And I remember Sanders came out and said, are you okay? I was like, man, I think I have to cancel. I couldn't even like, my mind wasn't working right. I was, I could barely, I barely had any energy. Uh, I remember Mike and Mike and Sanders, that first practice, I think you were still with on with Queens at that point, working, Troy. I was, I was working with Iggy. Oh, with I Iggy, yeah. So with Iggy. It was just us three we rehearsing. Had, yeah. We had like three days off before I went to Europe. <laughs> and that was the three days that we rehearsed and played that show. And then I went to Europe with Iggy. Yeah, I was, it was it was crazy. I was like, I almost like had to cancel the show. I couldn't, I didn't have any energy to play. Barely made it through that set too. It was crazy. Yeah, you were but green the whole time. Yeah, I was still glad we did it, but it was a crazy time, definitely. And I remember your hi hat kept moving because the carpet was like sliding it, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> old old school problems. Which is like yep. moving. <laughs> of course. I remember the Dragonfly show was totally packed. It was, you know, after being in a, in, in a main band for many, many years, it was, it was very rare to, to play a first show with someone else. So it was a different type of anxiousness, I remember, and it was very nervous, like a lot of new riffs and a lot of lyrics to remember. There were still working titles for Echolocation 2 in that set. Like, oh, wow. Like, I remember looking at the set list and seeing Hum which turned into um, Resurge. Resurge, yeah. So, and, uh, and Sad Song was, uh, was Dublin. Um, Dublin. Dublin. 
that's another thing about our, our, our music. There's always one song in our collection that's called Opus. <laughs> <laughs> I think that should just be a running kind of uh, like a thing that we do it for every record because yes. Opus turned into this, uh, what was it, this final, oh gosh. The last song on the EP, I'm, I'm spacing. This chapter? This chapter, yeah. And then Opus on Echolocation was, was Echolocation. And then Opus on this new record, it is called A Death of a Dream. Oh, so wow. We'll see what happens next time. So Opus on Echolocation was the echo, was the title track? I believe so. Song. We always tend to give Opus the, the longest. Opus, the, longest the longest, yeah, the longest, longest jam. jam that we have. <laughs> you know, a friend of mine named Heather asked if, uh, if I uh, often speak in Italian. Or do I ever speak it, sing it? I, I surely eat it. But, um, <laughs> Don't we all? But uh, I, I remember having the idea of, of when that song broke down and we were thinking of like this uh, this freak show circus environment, like the spokesman coming out, this, this like a, a very large obese Italian man with jet black hair, which I was fortunate enough to, to portray in our video for Echo Location. But, that uh, was you? Just, no one knows this, so let me just You're very convincing. blow some minds. Uh, it was a wonderful makeup job, for sure, and uh, that was a prosthetic belly. I know that could be confusing with me in real life. Right. But I wanted to tell Heather and anyone else that, that gives a damn um, what that Italian part means, okay? So it's going to get super sappy. Everyone ready? Close your eyes. I'm ready. My love, my deep love, full of life strength and courage a wonderful dream a gift of strength and love that god will give me amen to that and thank you heather for asking and um that's one thing i'll sing about again but i remember having the idea to do italian and my my three bandmates all in this photo right here mm -hmm. were very uh very supportive of it and um, we translated it and did it right there in the studio, and it's cool. You know who? You know who out. helped me translate that? My friend Marco Russo, who was Italian. Who happens to be Italian? And where's is he live in Italy? Is Marco from Italy? He does not. He lives in London. Um, but you wouldn't know. He's very he's Italian. Born in New York, lives in London, huh? But he's Italian. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> What's Marco up to? Man, let's hit him up. I know. I should get him on this. Some good foods. Yeah. He's I'm hungry. He, he may be asleep. I don't know. He might be asleep. It's it's morning time over there, I think. Yeah. You guys ever written an album during a pandemic before? Um, All the time? I can't are you, say that are we you guys 400 years old <laughs> or more? Um, back in uh, the turn of the century. Yeah. <laughs> Not the last century, the one before. You, you know, know, we were... Um, yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah, we were supposed to finish this record in, in April of 2020, correct? Which is a few weeks right. after this uh, this mess hit. So we had to scrap those travel plans because we simply couldn't do it. Yeah, we, we were, were looking forward to going to, to, to Clouds Hill yeah. to just get room and finish it up. And just yeah. like, we all had a book too, man. Flights to, yeah. fl flights to Hamburg, Germany. Yeah, yeah, and I think it, we were looking forward to because since, since well, I mean, I guess we had to finish this record in the pandemic because we started it just engineering ourselves. And, you know, basically, you know, everyone on the screen here, even even Troy Sanders now is an engineer. He engineers on his own vocal tracks. So that's kind of cool. But... The rest of us have been doing it for a long enough time that we just decided to just, like, like, out of necessity, engineer, produce, track, I mean, program, whatever you can think of, to start this record. And then, yeah, I was saying we were looking forward to giving those duties to someone else at Clouds Hill, so we could just be a band and perform. But yeah, that didn't happen. So, so the yeah. rest of the record. Is, is engineered, produced, programmed, sang, played, everything by us. So it's pretty, 
It was the first time I've ever ever been a part of uh, file sharing to to complete a body of work. But it was really out of, you know, in a perfect world, we would have continued doing what we were doing, is getting in a room, writing it, getting in a room, recording it, and always being together. That's where the best energy usually is. Yeah, you know, what's what's funny about that? You know, we had to finish it in this year before we all get super busy with other projects. And yeah, and we'd also been working on this on and off for several years. So it was like the time was time was now. So yeah. it was it was a necessity, like you said, Troy. We had yeah, to finish I, I think it remotely, you know, and we would do whatever it takes to get it to a point where we're all happy with every with every sound, every lyric, every riff, everything. Yeah, I think also that, you know, I knew we we're going to get a, like questions about the pandemic, obviously. And, how we did how we did the record and stuff but we're kind of like doing pandemic type records for a long time especially this one like we've been putting files together for this record more than we had actually gotten together you know echolocation i i thought was the first and now the only thing that we did all of us in a room you know like 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 gift was just like a few takes like you know fast awakening was literally the demo like you I think know, it was like, one take <laughs> yeah it was just it. one take so so it's just like so that was the first time actually that we were all in the room i remember when i'm backtracking a little bit but i remember when sanders played the baseline to echo location the song and we that was the first thing he played for me when he sat down the first time i was playing in a room with with troy sanders together for the first time even though we had an ep and played a live show. This is the first time we were like actually writing together. Um, and then to fast forward to what we're doing now is that it's it's actually gone back to how we started the band, which is passing things by because we, obviously we wanted to try to finish it in person, but it went back to kind of like what the band, we've always kind of thought the band would be, which was like putting a whole bunch of pieces together. And, you know, which leads me to you know mike's idea when he called and said let's do a quarantine song and we were like oh, okay so we we're and 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 so it we started mike sent a, a bunch of stuff that we started all adding to it and that became sometimes i feel and and so that's the really cool part about that because that was actually our our real like pandemic song um I don't know if you guys want to talk about that song more. Yeah, um, well, I mean, even just in this record, like you said, we've been passing these files back and forth for, what, five years? Um, you know, I was just digging through. I was just, like, just going through my Pro Tools files, and I found our old session dated from 2015, and it has all these little nuggets that we recorded that were the foundation of these tracks that we've just been going back and forth with in between records in between projects and so yeah i mean it was kind of kind of perfect that we were already in the flow on that with this record for five years and then by the time we got to sometimes i feel it just was it it felt more natural so it was like i mean sometimes i feel being in the heart of that this situation i mean those words alone (laughs) really speak to that song um and so obviously there's there's a lot of lot of pain in that song in particular uh but this dichotomy of of these mixed emotions that we're all feeling you know we're all experiencing these this this world separately that's like the, i think that's the weirdest the hardest part right now is that particular song it's because that song is us from our own perspective in different cities four different cities in four different environments put that together and make it one song yep absolutely nuts uh that was a that was a fun one to complete i uh you know my my to this day my favorite part of that song is is everyone's uh, obviously i don't sing but everyone's voices together on that song is still my favorite thing about that song there's something like strange about it and sometimes like the 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 notes are a little bit dissonant but not out of tune but they work and it's uh, uh that's became like my favorite part about that track in general i just wanted to hear troy sanders scream the word happiness at the end <laughs> that was my goal 
Just I wanted to change the title to uh, Sometimes I Feel, Sometimes I Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Guess I'm too late. <laughs> yep. uh, you know, maybe not. We could do a we could do a B side remix. Remix, here we go. <laughs> sure. That's the B side remix. Is sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was gonna say uh, Troy, VL, and Tony. I think you should you should tell us about breaks. That was that was kind of your your brainchild. Yeah. Um, well, I would I would say Tony really kind of put that one together so i think i would i, I mean to me yeah tony that was kind of your baby because it was it was basically done you know in my like almost done by the time i started digging into it um i mean it's a it's it's a beat song it's a it's it's a heavy heavy beat oriented song for me yeah, you I, know you know, I, I think with anything we write, it's, uh, uh, you know, it, it just was that song that, you know, like the first thing that we all heard is something that I brought, but really as everything in this band, like everyone brings something in first and every, and then it becomes a song. So uh, I'll start with that. But originally that song was, I was going to use it for another project and I just didn't think it worked for it. And I remember I showed it to you guys when we were actually one of the few times we were actually working here um, and, and, uh, and everyone was really into it. And I didn't really do that bridge part, uh, the, the last part until like way later, but it didn't, to me, it just, it just literally awoke. Like it was like a whatever song to me until Troy Sanders sang on it. And it yeah. all of a sudden it's like, okay, it has to be on the record has to, has to be at the forefront um and it was again like troy sanders like just sent us what do you guys think of this idea and everyone was like okay it's done and yeah we were, it was that it was just that kind of song like it's the everything was just kind of done on it everything was like either overdubbed or or nothing was like cut into pieces and redone like a lot of our songs that one was just kind of like it was like everyone just tracked on it and then it was finished. And um, I always think an interesting story is, I want Troy Sanders to talk about his vocal, but um, if you want to start with that Sanders, and then I want to talk, I want, I think it's a cool story that your backups Van Leeuwen on that song too, you know? Ooh, yeah, well, uh, I'll, good one. Yeah, I was going to jump in really quick. Um, I mean, basically the song was a, had a working title and the working title was Breaks. And um i remember talking to, to sanders you know as before he was going into record vocals and he was like what uh you know what what is this song about <laughs> and i i said well I, I mean if you need some lyrical i threw some stuff on paper or digital paper and uh and i said here's a rough idea it's basically a play on the words breaks um uh and and sort of like you know when 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 you're when you have the bravado that you you think you're doing something right and you don't realize that you're in a cycle and you're just doing what feels good and what feels right you know it's like tending it's like tending the cycle making sure there's no breaks because you're so confident in it. And then that confidence gets so much more out of control, the less that you see the path you're on, that you're actually driving a car full speed and hitting the wrong, you know, figuring out you gotta hit the brakes, but you're, you're hitting the wrong pedal. <laughs> so it's basically like a, like a, you're kind of stuck, like full force in this, behavioral pattern um and so that's kind of what i was saying to him like just fix it <laughs> fix these I, words <laughs> I, I didn't have to fix it and he delivered you this you delivered it. this thing that was so undeniably right on and i was like i i got no problems with this 
that song when after Troy had that conversation with me, you just you kind of you just kind of uh, rounded out the whole reason this band exists by what what you just said. You know, we're on this path that's badass and we're full throttle, but we don't really know exactly where it's going or whatever. But it's controlled chaos. Yeah, and uh, and everyone's on board with enthusiasm. So Tony sent over some music. I was like, dude, this is going to be great. And I was I booked the next few hours I could find in a studio, did vocals. You were stoked on the helping me out with lyrics, Troy Van Leeuwen. So it's, it's one of those team efforts, you know, total collaboration, which is, again, why this whole band happens. We're not yeah. here, so it's not, uh, you know, uh, Mike Zarin and the three uh, dorks. It's, uh, you know, we're, we're a band, you know. It's, um, yeah. So it feeds uh, off but, each other, and that's what, that's what just gives the energy back and forth, and it's this revolving door of excellence between the four of us of, I want to add this part. I want to do these vocals. Mike wants to add these keys. Tony's retracking drums. Everyone that is in their little pod in this – pandemic you know i think you know for me personally when i get into my room and i start creating i have to think of you guys that that you're in the room it's in order to get something out of me that fits you know so i think i i think we all kind of feel that when we get into our pods so it's it's almost like a it's almost like you're you're you know you're you're transporting you know, your band into your pod yeah. and you're saying, this is my idea, but you're actually sending it over the internet to them. And then they're like, yeah, or <laughs> yeah, or no. <laughs> That's the hardest part because there's no instant yeah. feedback and then you don't know what, where their yeah. headspace is out and you get it. <laughs> yeah. But right, right away when I heard those vocals, I didn't have, I didn't have a chance or time to even go in my studio but obviously yeah we're in a pandemic and we can't really there's there's not much else to do but other than go to the grocery store that's my favorite thing to do right now and so when i got those vocals i decided to sing my backup vocals in my car as i was driving just to get that feeling and so i just started screaming make sure there are no breaks <laughs> as I'm driving, you know, Love it. 100 miles an hour to the to to the Gelsons. <laughs> so those are the man. Those are the vocal takes on my iPhone on the way to the grocery store, probably picking up some some vegan something or another. I don't know vegan lasagna. That's the behind the scenes pe stuff that people they just they just they just want to know. So thank you. For they just want to know. I just told you. See? You know. <laughs> where's the best vegan lasagna from? I think that's the most important question. South I America. Know. South America? Yeah. Oh, we yeah. got to go get some. You guys ever gone to South America and played shows? Uh, I yeah. You yeah, guys yeah, crush yeah. it. I have not. We have to go there. Mike, you better go. Yeah. I need to go. Better go. We need to go. We I'm have so day day when the time hits. It's yeah, incredible. I, I, the hungry, hungriest fan base on all of Mother Earth. And Mike said, oh, yeah. Out. They're pretty damn Amazing. good. I would love to go to Mexico, South America. You know, once this whole thing clears up, that would be so much fun. Let's Central go, America. Let's agree right Let's now to do all that. Down. What was that again? Let's agree right now to do all that. I would love that. I'm in. Spit I'm in. All right, we're going to South America. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna hit up. I'm gonna hit up uh, Nicolas Muniz when I'm there. Oh yeah, Berg. That's my homie. You guys remember playing that Cloud Sill Festival a year ago? Nick. Was that a year I ago? Can't believe it's a year ago. Mm -hmm. It was October. Jeez. That was October. No, it was yeah. December. Yeah. It was November. November, but whatever. November. Yeah, it was, uh, we had, no. we, it doesn't we matter. For, time is time is an illusion. It was the last Around gig that I ever Time played. is an illusion. We were uh, we were um, um, we missed Thanksgiving. We were there for Thanksgiving. That's right. Well, that's right. Okay. So it was November. We we went to have we went to get Thai food for for Thanksgiving dinner. We oh, missed yeah. Thanksgiving, but we made all the Christmas markets. I went to every single Christmas market in Hamburg. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, and yeah. then a, a month later, 
no one walked on water came out. Ever walked right. on water. Sorry, I could say the name of our song correctly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like that was really exciting because that was the first thing we released off the new stuff. But that show, um, talking about, you know, the, we played the Clouds Hill Festival. We were already talking to Clouds Hill as a label, um, as a new home for this record. And it, it just kind of all worked out perfectly because we've got to play this amazing boutique festival in Hamburg. Uh, you know, you guys actually got to finally meet uh, Johan and, and his amazing team. And we had this amazing few days there. And then we like we knew for sure that after that, that we were going to all work together. And and I just, you know, I knew everyone was going to love him and, and love the team and gracious, uh, open. They, you know, they are there, you know, they're push us, even though we like to be as artistic as we possibly can, they push us to be more artistic, which is kind of cool. It's never the opposite. And, uh, and, uh, and I, it's just, it's, it's really cool that we all that came together literally just the last November. And here we are, like, like, I think Sanders, you just said that that was the last note you played and you played more shows than everybody. Yeah. And that's that crazy. That we played or that I've been a part of. Oh, that of. was the last. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was I mean, the last show I played. It was. <laughs> yeah. It was. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Nope. Sorry. I lied. I played another show in January, but we won't talk about that. Close enough. Um, felt like the last show. Yeah. Uh, well, it's right funny because because that that show was uh, it was a lot of fun because uh, we showed up a day earlier to kind of set up and you know get one last rehearsal in and uh, I remember the team taking such good care of us and. Um, I mean, the studio is incredible. And uh, I mean, first of all, that was one of the reasons we wanted to go in, in April and, and finish this record there is because, I mean, the gear nerd in me just couldn't stop looking at everything that was in both of those control rooms and, and all the mics. And it's just, it's like, I mean, it, it's, it's a gear nerd's heaven. You just uh, be lost so, there. Yeah, and, and for, for us, it was fun to hang out the night before and, you know, hang out with the Teenage Fan Club, and, and they played, too, and it was, it was just a good time, you know. Sanders, did yeah, it, it was, it was that. something? What was that? Didn't Sanders get stuck there at some I point? I did. I, got, I missed my – my flight was canceled that following morning at the airport, so I – I wound up staying at an airport hotel, but I, I thought about and should have just turned around and gone right back to Clouds Hill and hung out there. Yeah. It was so welcoming, so comfortable there. But you guys had already split, so I didn't want to be all alone. You guys were at the airport drinking Bloody Marys, I assume? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I, had st I, I had stopped, but, uh, you know, so, some of us had continued, and uh, <laughs> we were like, we were, I could not wait to get on the plane to go to sleep because we, we didn't sleep, remember? We like I know. went straight to the airport. We yeah, went straight to the airport like three or four morning. That was, that was a good time. We should, we should do that again, man. That was a lot of fun. Do that again. Let's do it, Let's do it next week. It'd be great. Next well, week. This Christmas. I need more German Christmas oh, markets in my life. Yeah. Yes. Um But it was yeah, it was it was nice to be there because um well, Hamburg is always nice at that time of year, I think. It, it definitely feels Christmassy and, and kind of like like a, like you're going to be hugged with warmth. <laughs> or or, or Brick <laughs> Chill. Or, yeah. Chill. Or that. It's just cold. Yeah. Hugged with warmth. I was saying the people are warm, but oh, the, the weather's cold. Water, the, the air is cold. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, um, I don't know how we segue out of that, but um, our friend Tyler asked. Us Tyler a Orton. Tyler Orton. And, and he said that our music is something like atmospheric and all this stuff, and, and it feels more of a film score than a, like like a band. 
So if it is a film score, and I'm paraphrasing here, what movie would it be? I just did an interview recently, and I answered a very similar question. And I would hope, and I would wish, especially with this record, that it could be Dune. I do. Uh, what the f I was thinking the yeah. same thing. All right, they're man. literally thinking the same thing. <laughs> Dude, oh, wow, that's so funny. That's wow, that 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 you, you answer you. was not. You could see how unplanned that was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was response. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do, do you think the new album could just be a be a score that would put people to sleep, or, or what's what are you trying to say there? <laughs> <laughs> it's just dusty yeah. and dark and. Because people are really, really stressed right now, and they need to sleep. If yeah, if our new album could be a score of a classic movie, it's, it's guys, it's got to be Spaceballs. <laughs> I mean, hold on. Yeah, I mean, if we can't, if you we guys, are, you guys both got to get out of my head. <laughs> oh my god! Thank you. That's, that's this is my pride of my stu of my studio room. If not this new <laughs> album, then the next album we write will be. It'll be a it, it'll be a, a, a parallel of space balls. Come on, guys. I mean, it's a mall. It's a half man, half dog. I'm with that. We can mute, we can Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon style it, and just mute it and write the and just write it. Chapter yeah. Two. Why don't we just do that? I'm so down with that. Let's this do that while we're in South America. While while we have time. We could tie all of this together and write <laughs> the score to Space Balls Two while on tour in South, <laughs> South America. <laughs> I would uh, love that. Yep, we have the resources Perfect. at our fingertips. Wait, what was Spaceballs Two called? It was uh, oh. Spaceballs Two is what we're going to write the score to. It doesn't exist yet. No, but in in Spaceballs One, I think he mentioned Spaceballs Two. Well, they're going to do more merchandising. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how do we like cross market like all this stuff with Spaceballs Two? And well, I'll call Mel Brooks tomorrow, and we'll see Bill? what we can do. We got to get Rick Moranis out Mel. of retirement. Yeah, we do. Yeah. He's ready. That's the first key. I think Smell the kids shrunk him, so he's not going to, I don't know, they got to <laughs> get him back to normal size. <laughs> well, we'll see what the power of the shorts will do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, I, I think we've talked about it a few times, but I think, I think we're definitely all very excited. You know, it's hard to always talk about what's next, what's next when you're releasing singles during 2020 and no one knows what's next, but you know, obviously, you know, we've released these songs already. Um, we're definitely, you know, we're definitely building for something to something. And th that something is, is a, a record that's been in the making for far, far, far too long. Um, yeah. And I it's, uh, yeah. And it, it's like, we've done other things and released other things in this band before this record got done, you know, and like, I think we purposely uh, pushed each other on this record, Be Different. I remember we were cutting up one of the songs and Troy Sanders was sitting behind me and he said, yeah, I don't know what you guys are doing right now. <laughs> so <laughs> he, said, he said something like that. And I was like, it's like that's the best thing I've ever heard because that me that to me seemed like like because we all come from the rock world and write, we write songs as bands and all that and for Troy Sanders to say like I have no idea what you guys are doing you know um, an extremely smart musician that I was just like all right we're doing we're doing exactly what we said we were gonna do this like out of like left field record for all of us this band I think you know, with the EP and echolocation, we had all these other dreams for these records, but you can't force your dream onto a record. The record will be what it's gonna be. And that's why echolocation sounds like a band and doesn't sound like, you know, atmospheric or a little bit out there or a little bit left of center. And this record finally was, I think, the what we've always said that we wanted in a certain way for this band, like to be a little bit out a little bit out there compared to everything else we've done you know because even even without us saying anything people always compared the two other records to all our bands you know put together you know and that's the sound of gone is gone 
And I think like we, you know, if I'm being very open, like I haven't read that yet on any of the singles, you know, cause it's easy just to say that. And it was easy to say that on the EP and echolocation, I think. And it's finally like, it's, it's becoming harder for journalists to say that's odd. That's all gone is gone is. And they've been very nice to us. Don't get me wrong, but it's exciting yeah, to me yeah. that it's hard for them to say that, you know? The, 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 that's the point though. It's like, if you're going to do something, um, I mean, even, you know, with like my, you know, my band Queens of the Stone Age, we are always trying to make our favorite music. We're always trying to do something that we haven't done. But still, the queens sound like the queens because that's the combination of the characters. And so when you're talking about this combination of characters, it has to be different. And I think that we've, we've kind of like staked that claim a little bit on this, on this new record because, I mean, it's not even recorded anywhere near the way that if the three of our other bands have done and what Mike might be doing during the day when, when he's composing so that's i think a, a a win because that's that's the whole point it's supposed to be different it's supposed to not sound like what you've done in the past and it's supposed to it's supposed to be a challenge and so to me this this new record is is um is the future of what this is it's uh, it's the road to the future yeah, that's the best way to put it. It's the road to the future. I, I agree. It's, it's, I mean, the fact that it started five years in 2015 and has been something we've touched, just touched along the way, touched and put away, touched yeah. and put away, touched and put away. While we finish these other records, while we do these other singles and projects, we still touch it and we put it away. And now I think because of the way we did that, it has the, our full thought process, you know, whereas the others are thought processes for those periods of time that we worked on them. But this has a bit more of an arc in terms of how we approached it. Yeah, I think it turned it from uh, what began as a side project super group, which was labeled from, from the get go. And uh, five, six years later with all this energy that we've collectively put into it, it's become uh, what this new record is to me is something very substantial that would hold its weight up against any band that's been out there for 20 years or more. I'm sorry, someone's screaming in the background here. You guys probably can't hear it, yeah. but it sounds fucking crazy. <laughs> like an adult? Like an adult woman going, ah! <laughs> Dude, go get your camera, it's a murder. <laughs> okay. Go get your yeah, camera. I'm, I'm it's a murder. Camera. There's the man who would know. Yeah. <laughs> like that goes back. Gotta the document this. <laughs> yeah, dude. There might be some dub happening next door. Yeah, might be. And that will really capture <laughs> that. Will, this whole this whole talk that we're doing now will culminate to this live murder on camera. <laughs> I, I mean, God, it's going down. That's depressing. Cool. <laughs> the evidence uh, tapes. The evidence tapes. <laughs> <laughs> this will be, talk about going viral, dude. So, uh, well, I mean, this is off topic, but uh, what are we all drinking tonight? What, what are we having? Well, I'm done. Maybe well, some tequila. I'm, I'm almost... What? What's I'm tequila drinking. I'm drinking Vita Mezcal. Vita. I'm drinking something that I've had for about seven years. Siete años. It's called <laughs> Gran Coriado. Coriado. Well, I guess this would be Vita. That would probably, I just butchered that. Vita. Vita. Vita Mezcal. What do you have in there, Sanders? It's San Luis del Rio. This is a local, uh, local uh, brewery it's called a Free Dive IPA. Nice. By the Copper Tail oh. Brewery, which you is down by. You're diving yeah. in your water. <laughs> you go spear? Do you go spear fishing in the Gulf? On Tuesdays, my neighbors <laughs> go spear fishing and they catch these big old sea bass right outside of my, like right in the water. It's crazy. 
That's why you need a grill. Um, a little olive Murderers. Oil. Murderers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least the screaming stopped over here, so either <laughs> saved or she's dead. <laughs> well, cheers, gentlemen. Yeah, good to see you all. Thanks for asking all the questions. Hopefully we'll see you all soon. All right, this is driving me nuts. I'm sorry. You guys got to come with me. Yeah, please. All right. Oh, this Blair is great. Fish. It's like blip. This is like Blair Witch. Yeah. It is. He's going to go kill that person. <laughs> There's another movie where this happened as well. I'm also forgetting that. Was it Friday the 13th Part 10 where Jason goes to outer space? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, I, I see like a lot of Halloween black. lights. I see a lot of Halloween lights. So maybe it's a recording. Oh, maybe it's, it's your uh, 87,000 pieces of uh, Halloween decorations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys decorate? Have you, have you decorated yet for Halloween, Troy? Not uh, yet. I have a little bit, yes. Ask Tony. Uh, uh, Troy, Troy VL started in, uh, uh, and family, they started in around uh, August or so. Um, wow. <laughs> Halloween's a big deal for us over here at the Van Leeuwen household. Yeah, I miss your Halloween parties. Those are always the best. I, they, they they went down in history a couple. Okay, did you hear that? It's got to be a Halloween decoration, so I, I I feel okay. I feel okay. This is how this is how the trailer starts, basically. I know. Like we're making the trailer now. Just don't get murdered. So like that, we don't want that to be the plot. <laughs> Can, yeah, can you exactly. Guys we, this, can you see this house? Like, you see no. this decoration? No. Oh, see wow. your, like, we just see pitch black. That's cool. Pitch black is rad. All right, I'm just going to yeah, let that lady yeah. die. <laughs> <laughs> see something, do nothing. <laughs> Isn't that the old saying? Words of wisdom. See yeah. something, say nothing. Or, or in your case, <laughs> hear something, do nothing. Do nothing. That's my you, motto. You guys are great, man. Thanks for hanging out with me on our. You know what? You guys are great. Yeah. No, you're great. great. No, you're great. Oh, no, you are. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs>